Hello everyone, welcome to the anubavtrainings.com. In this video series, we are discussing how to automate your Fury applications. Also, we are talking about best practices which you should involve while it comes to the automated regression testing of your Fury apps. In the last couple of sessions, we discussed about setting up our development environment, talked about the identifiers, how to identify your elements and the DOM, and in the last session, we talked about how to launch your first Fury Launchpad as part of the Chrome browser. In this video, we will go ahead and discuss about how to handle the logon page automatically using our automation script written in Java Selenium. So let's get started. As you all already seen in our last session, we have coded our script launch the Chrome browser. And in that, we have loaded our Fury Launchpad. I'm going to run that once again. So let me execute. And we will see our Chrome browser instance will launch. And this will also open up the Fury Launchpad. So this is the Fury Launchpad screen, which will come up now. And it's time we go and identify how to identify this user password field and this logon button. To do this identification, what I will do is I will go to uh, Chrome extensions and I will install one of the interesting extension which I found out recently, which can help you to find the unique identifiers. So let me go to the extensions.chrome.com. Let's search for extensions Chrome. And you can go to the Chrome Web Store extensions. And there we will download one free extension for export. Those who are not so comfortable with XPath, please feel free to watch my video session two, where I've explained a little about XPath in video session two of this series. Okay, so we will use this root XPath finder and just add it to the Chrome browser. It's a free extension, XPath finder, and you can see it's been already added now. Let's go back to the logon page here, and we will quickly reload our logon page. Now, over here, you can see this Ruto offered test leaf has access to the site. It has opened up. I click on this and you can see it's currently off. I just switch it on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select our user field. You can see a small red color highlighter also over there. When I select this, we'll go back to Ruto. The Ruto will tell me the identifiers over here. So you can see it it found that ID is unique across the page. Name is also unique and CSS is also unique. So these are all the three things it has found that they are unique. It also gives you a recommendation that what is the name of the field. So you can see these are uniquely identified by the router. So I'm going to copy probably this ID because I, I see that this ID is unique. We'll copy the ID, not the X path. I'm going to copy, right click and copy. And we will be using this with our driver to fill the data in this username field. I'm going to close the router. Now I'll just go back to our program. And this is where in our script, we're going to write the code for handling and entering my username. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we do is we will just create driver dot find element. This is an API provided by framework. And we'll search the element by its ID because we have identified that ID is unique. We pass in the ID and this will produce something called object of the web element. So we're going to store this object. I will say object of my user field. And we'll declare this object over here on the top. So let's declare both of these objects, so one for password and one for username. It's called web element or user field. And password field. Both of these objects we are declaring. Now, as usual in Java, this gives me a red. A system doesn't able to identify the right package. We can just import the package from the Selenium library. And now, similarly, we'll also write the code to and the password. So let's go and find the password field using Ruto. I click back to Ruto. 
And this is the unique identifier for password. Copy that. And we place it also over here. Fantastic. Now, the interesting thing is we need to pass the data automatically to the username and password field. So my username here is uh, Anubhav. I will be using my username Anubhav to open my system and I'll say send keys to send basically the data in that input field. And I'll pass my user ID Anubhav, my SAP system user ID. And I will pass the password dot send keys and I will pass the password. So typically you will have a generic user which you will use to contact and log in. This user will be shared across all the team members. However, as an additional security, it is recommended to not put in the password in a string format, rather put it in an encoded format as base64 encoding. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this password for additional security purpose. I'm going to go back and I'll go to base64 decode org. This is where we can go and decode this password in a base64 format. Okay, encode. So we go to the encode option. And now here we give in the password value. We'll try to encode this for base64 value. So this is the encoded password. It's more secure. I'm going to store it over here, the encoded password, and then later on, we can decode and pass it to the system. So this is my encoded password, and now I'm going to do decode. So how do we decode? We can say byte. I can say byte stream, byte of array. I can say decoded password equals to, we'll be using one of the Java utility for d64 dot the decoder dot decode. And we're gonna pass here our password, which is base64 encoded. So this is better in your code. Nobody can actually find out what exactly your password is. Little bit of security. Of course, they can decode and find out though it's typically a generic user. And now this one needs to be converted. String, so I can say new string, and we pass this byte string over here. So that's the password now completing the system. Let's go back and finally identify identify a logon page, logon button. So for that, I'll switch back to the browser, and we can just see what's the ID of this guy, login button. Yeah, so let's do that. Ruto, add to Ruto, and go back. And now you see this is the tag it identifies for Logon. But I'm not so happy based on the X path, which is building based on class name or based on the text. So rather, I want to build my own X path, hopefully by checking the ID of this button if it is present. So let's investigate the DOM for this button and see if there is any unique identifier for this button. So there's no unique identifier, rather this logo on text is there. But at the, if you traverse a little bit up on the DOM, you can find there is one identifier called ID, which is unique for the button tag. So not exact element, but little bit up on the DOM and you go, you can actually see, this seems to be a very much a static ID. Probably we can rely on this one to click on the button. So once again, I'm gonna come back and I say, uh, of course, all your declaration should be ideally on the top. And I'm going to say OPTM equals to say web drive web element OBTN driver dot find element by ID the more, most stable way if you have stable IDs in your app and then you can say dot fantastic so now system should be able to find these elements okay find element by ID and pass the ID over here. So it's gonna find your element and click on the button. So these are all the steps we have to handle a login the name field, password field, decoded password, and finally tick off login button. It's a good practice that you give comments get the object of username field. And second one goes as object of password field. And finally, uh, get object of logon button and click. 
Fantastic. So that's my test script. Uh, of course, we'll talk about more on modularization in coming units. So let's go ahead and execute now. You fire once again, should expect to launch another browser instance. And it should go and copy my credentials for the system. And I should be able to log on to the application under test. So this is launching. Wow. Fantastic. There you go. It has entered my username and password. That was real quick. And now it has um, clicked on logon button. So I'm able to launch the SAP Puri launch pad. So that was it about this chapter. If you think that these videos are helping you, please feel free to like and subscribe this channel. And do let me know your comments in the feedback box below into the chat window. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.